Okay, welcome everybody to to my do-it-yourself video on how to change the oil on the Lexus HS250H. The Lexus HS250H is a Prius-based hybrid sedan that's very similar to the to the Toyota Camry in some respects, very similar to the Prius in other respects. I believe somewhere on Wikipedia they said the vehicle was originally based off a Toyota Visus. Now this video is going to give you the overview on how to change the oil of the vehicle. It assumes that you already have mechanical scale, you know how to change the oil, and this is just a guide to tell you where everything is and what parts and tools you need. I'm not responsible for any damage you do to your vehicle and please if you're not sure about any step and you've read this and you're still confused please contact a automotive expert who will guide you through this. Um, and while we're at it here I also want to mention that that you know I use the term Lexus but this vehicle really is built through Toyota Motor Corporation. So I will use the term Lexus and Toyota interchangeably often as I speak. Okay, let's get started. Okay, before we get started, let me before we get started, let me talk about the supplies you're going to need. Um, you'll need five quarts of Mobile Zero W20. I just use Mobile because it's my favorite brand, and I can always find lots of uh, rebates and such. It's available everywhere, but if you want to use Pens Oil. That's fine. Uh, I think even Valvoline now has 0W20. Whatever, whatever brand you want is fine. As long as you use a good quality, fully synthetic W20 oil. And I always make sure that it's it says on front of it, recommended for Toyota and Honda. Um, speaking of mobile W20, you can get a 5-quart five ju jug here available at Walmart for $23, $24. Um, you can get these individual quarts available at Fred Meyer by Mart. Um, I've heard people say that you can get them at a reasonable price uh, from Amazon. All, all that's important is you buy a good quality oil no matter which brand it is. Now for filters, I prefer the Toyota brand 90915-Yankee Zulu Zulu Foxtrot 1 filter. It's basically the standard oil filter that the dealer uses, and yes, the Lexus does use the Lexus dealer does use Toyota filters. It's pretty much a standard Toyota filter. Um, these are available relatively inexpensive. My dealer sells these filters in a three pack for twelve dollars. Sometimes they can get two for for uh, seven dollars, depending on the sale. It just they're the lowest price for me and are locally available. If you want to use a Wix, that's fine. I've heard good things about the high-end purulators. You can use those too. But I do recommend, if you can, stick with a Toyota filter. If your cars are under warranty, it's just easier to show that you've done the work and there should be no complaints if you have a powertrain issue. Finally, you'll need this little fastener and this is a clip so 90467-07211 and you'll find later it's a little clip that goes underneath the vehicle that covers the oil filter it's part of the plastic trim now for tools I use to remove the drain pan a 14 millimeter box end wrench and I also will use a socket with a torque wrench <coughs> to install it uh, I haven't pictured them here yet because obviously I'm, I'm, I have them on side. But um, those are optional. Some people always use torque wrenches. Some people don't. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that as we remove it. Now, let's get the car prepped. Okay, here we are. Here, here we are here with the hood open. And I'm just going to remove the old cap off my hot engine after I've driven it. And I'm going to remove the dipstick. Now, as a safe safety mechanism, I always, always remove the dipstick and the oil cap and put them with my keys. The reason I do that is, is that there's no way I can accidentally start the car without forgetting to put the oil in. Also, by doing that, 
by, by putting the dipstick and the oil cap in a, in a place away from the car, I, if I accidentally hit the on button on this vehicle, because it is a hybrid, I can't accidentally power the system. The Having the keys away from the vehicle does that too. Is that also does that as well. But remember that these hybrid vehicles, the remotes are quite powerful and six feet is not far enough. I generally put the keys and the oil cap like somewhere completely far away from the vehicle just to be on the safe side due to that. Now, let's go get underneath the vehicle. Okay, now we're underneath the vehicle here and as you can see it's uh, not really a lot of space down here. And if you're like my, if you're tall like me, even less space. So let's pan to the drain plug. As you can see, here's the back of the vehicle. There's the drain plug. It's quite simple. The oil filter cover is not quite so simple. So if you pan over here, and I'll see if I can get a good view of this. Right in here, if you pull this back, there's the oil filter. Now, there's a little fastener. That fastener I showed you, that fender well fastener, sits right here. Sits right here. And that's what covers the the actual fender well. The cover is the filter. I've removed that. A little fender well fastener. I'm going to show you in a sec here. But it normally requires a knife or such to remove it. So let's get away from here and I'll show you that. Okay. So this is the fender well fastener. These little fast, this little fastener here, you'll find them all over the car, and you'll even find these in Toyotas. What happens is the fastener, when you when it's installed, is like this. There's no way to get access to the back of the car. So what I do is I use a razor blade and just pull this insert out and remove it. Now after a couple oil changes, these do get damaged and they don't fit anymore. So what I normally do is spend the 75 cents and buy one of these from Toyota and replace them every time. You, your mileage may be different, but I generally just, it's not worth the hassle for me to have one of these fall and have the uh, have the fender well cover flap in the wind. So that's what I do. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go drain, drain, the, drain the oil and remove the filter. They're quite simple. One thing to keep in mind about the filter is, let me bring it over here, to the filter is that this filters, generally speaking, you can just remove these with your hand. A little bit of sandpaper works. You don't really need a tool. But if you have somebody who's really torqued it on, really torqued it on, you might have to get yourself either a tool or I've used a pair of channel locks to get it off. But when you put it on, just remember, these just have to be gasket contact and one flat finger tight. When you remove it, the other thing is, is you can see there's a gasket on here that's covered in plastic right now but it's a gasket. After you remove it from the engine, make sure that the engine does not have this gasket still is stuck is attached to it. Because if it does and you double gasket this, you'll have oil leaks like everywhere. So keep that in mind. The other thing is is in your drain pan, when you've purchased these oil these these oil filters in your drain pan, the Toyota dealer will give you these. And what I do, I've been told, is the correct method with these is this side, the green side, goes against the engine and the pan side and the, the bolt secures here. Replace these every time you change the oil as well. But like again, when you buy oil filters, the Toyota filter dealer will throw these in for free. If you buy oil filters from, from Walmart or Baxter's, make sure to purchase one of these. They may be 50 cents. Don't reuse these because you will have leakage in your engine. So I'm going to change my oil and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, now that we're back, a couple things I want to touch on. Some of you who are seasoned auto repair technicians will know I didn't mention anything about, about lubing the seal on the oil filter. The, to the reason is, is in the Toyota oil filter, this seal is lubricated from the factory. That's why these filters are, are sealed in plastic. So it's just a case of putting them on. If you're using a Wix or a Crawlinator, I highly suggest putting a thin film of oil on the, on the gasket surface for tightening it. 
that will prevent tearing and leakage of the gasket. After you put the gasket on, leave the flap down so you can leak check the engine. Oil filter and oil filter area as well as the drain plug. Another thing is this I want to get on, we'll speak to while we're here, is that um, there's some controversy about the torque of the, of the drain plug. Um, generally speaking, I've always tightened them to finger tight and one flat. Just like the oil filter, when you get gasket contact, one or two flats. Um, there is a torque spec, it ranges from 18 foot pounds to 20 foot pounds, I've heard. Some people have said as low as 11. Um, I think it's safe to use 20, I don't think it would be a problem if you want to. There's nothing wrong with using a torque wrench. Um, again, I've used one flat, I've used gasket contact in one flat for a long time and never had any problems. Another thing I want to mention is, I forgot to mention here, and I'll bring it down here, is that when you're removing the, the uh, drain plug, please use a box end wrench or a ratchet. Do not use this end. Because what happens is, is that you can slip and actually damage and round it. I actually purchased a vehicle one time that, whose drain plug was so badly rounded that I had to use a pipe wrench to get it off. So please use this end. And if you are unsure, you're at a weird angle, feel free to get a six point as opposed to this as a 12 point box end. Because uh, that will keep you from damaging these drain plugs. And trust me, you can damage the drain plugs to the point where you have to take them to a shop to have them removed. Now, concerning oil, when you, when you pour your oil into here, if you can get and see, but there's like uh, an area here, and the actual area where the oil flows is into here. You have to be very careful because you can just pour oil, pour oil, and pour oil, and it'll just up well into here and eventually run down the engine. So, whether you're using the quartz or the jugs, just pour slowly. Strangely, the threads in here are the same as the heads, the heads of those uh, quartz sized jugs, so you can actually thread them in and leave them, let them drain for a minute or two while you're doing other things. Get all your oil out. Um, I found that if I pour four quarts in, it'll bring the dipstick to the full mark with, while it, while, without the, the engine being run. Um, the, the oil filter holds a little about three quarters of a quart. So what I do is I just pour all five quarts in. It's a little on the high side, it's okay. Um, some people I know only put four and a half so that it exactly that is in three quarters of the dipstick. That's fine. Just remember that you've got that half quart and keep it tightly sealed so you don't want to contaminate it. Since I won't be changing oil from another year, I just pour it all in. Now that we've got that done, let's put the oil cap back on. Let's put the dipstick in. Check it one more time with the dipstick and we'll start up the car. Okay, now we got the vehicle the dipsticks put in, the oil levels checked, we started the car. Because we have a hybrid, we have one of these unique issues here. The engine doesn't run all the time. So what I normally do is I put the key in the uh, start start the car up, select power on, cycle the switch to the power button and back into the uh, into the power to the power mode, then recycle it back to eco and let the engine run. I then, since it's run already for a few minutes, like as you can see, 30 seconds or a minute as it ran to charge the battery, I then go down below, check the oil level, to check for leaks, and then select the uh, reinstall the cover. I then close the hood, do a preliminary oil level check, and then drive around the block. And then I do a final oil level check. Um, because we can't rev the engines, we can't really fill the oil filter up this way. So, so this is the only real way of checking, the, of get, making sure that our oil level, we get an accurate oil level check. Another thing to keep in mind is the car is going to be beeping like crazy because we got hoods open, you may have doors open, you may have it on stands and it may think it's at a weird angle. Just bear with it, this is a hybrid. So I'm going to go do a final leak check, turn the, car, turn the car off first, do a final leak check, 
going to drive around the block. Okay, we've driven we've driven around the block, and we've uh, you know driven around the block and checked the oil again. It's good. Final thing we.